Yo, what is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another New World video. Today I'm going to be taking you through my personal PvP musket build that I've been using and will continue to use. Now before we jump into it, I do want to say that this will be a longer video because there's a lot of stuff that I want to cover to really help you guys out as much as possible. So sorry for my rambling, but there's a couple of things that I want to go over first. This build, who is it for? This build is going to be for anyone who wants to use the musket as their primary weapon. So for people who don't like melee and feel way more comfortable at range, or for people who don't feel uncomfortable in melee, but they feel way more confident at range. Now I'm not claiming this to be the best setup in the game, but I personally think this is one of the strongest setups for the musket given this playstyle. Now I know if you're new to the game, you might have tried the musket out in PvP and thought to yourself, this thing sucks. And to be honest, you wouldn't be wrong. The musket is really an end game weapon. And hopefully after going through everything, you'll see why. So with all that said, let's finally jump into the talents. So if you're using the musket, I highly suggest that you really put in the practice and start aiming for people's heads. Your damage is going to be so much better if you can get used to hitting headshots. And I know that that's easier said than done, but there's actually a talent for the musket that's actually going to help you way more with this. It's called Sniper. It's right down at the bottom. You add a three times optical zoom while you ADS with the musket. You can toggle it with your mouse wheel scrolling up and down. And this talent Sniper also adds 15% damage to all of your headshots. So when we're talking about path of progression for leveling up the muskets, there's really two ways that you can actually take it. Get Sniper later on. This is primarily going to be if you're playing solo or maybe with one other person. However, if you're going to be leveling with friends, you could actually rush to get this talent just so you're more consistent with shots and you're getting the extra damage. But starting out, we're going to go with that solo leveling build. We're going to pick up power shot first. We're going to grab powder burn and we're also going to grab your traps. So these are your three main abilities. What do they do? Your first one being power shot. Overload the musket with gunpowder causing the next shot to deal 150% weapon damage, and this does not stack or combine with other overload shots. It has a 15 second cooldown. The next ability is gonna be Powder Burn. Overload the musket with gunpowder, causing the next shot to deal 110% weapon damage and cause a burn status effect that deals 20% weapon damage per second for nine seconds. And this also does not stack or combine with other overload shots. Powder Burn also has a 15 second cooldown. And finally, we have Traps. Throw a trap down that lasts 20 seconds. When triggered, it causes the target to be rooted, immobilizing them for 3 seconds. And this has a 20 second cooldown. So the next talent we'll be picking up is going to be Backdraft. Standard musket shots deal 12% additional damage to a target that is on fire. After that, we're going to go for Chronic Trauma. If Powder Burn is a headshot, extend the burn duration to 13 seconds. This talent is amazing you always want to be trying to get a headshot with powder burn. So at this point, you're really going to decide whether you're leveling with a group of friends or if you're kind of playing solo. If you're leveling with a group of friends, I would actually suggest dropping Trapper and actually pick up all of the talents that we'll go through on the sharpshooter side to get sniper faster. But for now, we're going to go over to the Trapper tree and all of the traits that we pick up, the order that we pick them up. Once you finish the sharpshooter tree and pick up sniper, you'll pick up your Trapper traits in the same order. So the next trait that we're going to pick up is going to be Trapped Damage. Traps also apply rent to the target, increasing damage to trap targets by 20% for three seconds. The next thing that we're gonna get is kind of a quality of life. It's called hustle. After a dodge, you gain haste, increasing movement speed. This tooltip says 0%, but it's actually 10% in game for three seconds. Not a huge speed increase, but it's still better than nothing. Now this trait is absolutely crucial and just smooths out the gameplay so much for the musket. It's called tactical reload. Dodging reloads the musket. This can only occur once every six seconds. Next, we're gonna grab Kick Em When They're Down, which adds 10% extra damage to targets with an active crowd control status on them. That being a root, a slow, or a stun. Our trap is a root and we already have something that applies a 20% damage increase. This is gonna make it a 30% damage increase. Next, we're gonna be going over to the sharpshooter tree. We're gonna pick up Empowering Headshot. On successful headshots, grant Empower increasing all musket shots damage by 10% for 5 seconds. This buff will actually apply both to your power shot and your powder burn, but we'll talk about the order of those in a minute. Next, we're going to grab Ballistic Advantage. Remove damage falloff from standard musket shots 
on targets more than 50 meters away. So if you're unaware, the further a target is out, the less damage you will do to them whenever you hit them. This is just going to completely remove it. The next thing that we're going to grab is going to be hit your mark. Increased headshot and critical hit damage to a target the further it is away from you. This caps out at a maximum of 15% damage at 100 meters away. The next thing that we're going to grab is going to be initial engagement. When you hit a power shot, gain empower, causing attacks to deal an additional 10% damage for 5 seconds. Now this next trait is a very small DPS increase, but we do need 10 traits inside of our sharpshooter tree to be able to select sniper. We increase the musket's damage by 5% if we aim down sights for more than three seconds. To be completely honest with you, the only time that I would suggest people actually use this is if they're ganking someone. You're getting a surprise tack on someone and you have the time to actually proc the three seconds. If you're in the middle of a fight, I do not think it's worth you aiming down sight for three seconds just for a 5% damage increase. The next trait that we're gonna grab is gonna be called shot resupply. Standard attack headshots reduce all muzzle ability cooldowns by 10%. And finally, the one talent that's going to make this build feel amazing, Sniper. Now, I quickly want to mention Heightened Precision. Yes, it is going to give you more damage if you were thinking about running it rather than called shot. But the problem that I have with Heightened Precision is an FOV or field of view issue. I've played a lot of first person shooter games over the years and I can tell you that tunnel vision is a real thing and it can get you killed a lot. Depending on the type of content you're doing, yes, you could drop called shot and pick up heightened precision, but generally speaking, I think it's way more beneficial for you to actually come out of your animation sometimes while you're reloading just to be able to look around. The last thing that you want is to be standing there, tunnel vision down, trying to snipe some people really far and have a group of guys running at you like a pack of gorillas, all with war hammers and great axes. It's not going to be a fun day. It's an easy way to get yourself killed. For that one reason, I'm not a fan of it. I also want to mention that if you're ADS and you've procced the max stacks of six, if you enter in an animation for powder burn or power shot, it's actually going to cancel this buff, which kind of sucks. So the next trait that we're going to grab is going to be salt on the wounds, which is going to give us 10% increased damage to targets below 30% health. Now, if you've ever noticed the difference between the damage you do between people that are wearing light armor and people who are wearing heavy armor, you kind of quickly realize that the people in heavy armor, it feels like you're just throwing wet noodles at them rather than actually shooting bullets at them. This trait is going to help you out a little bit. It's called weakened defense. Increases the stamina damage from standard shots dealt to enemies blocking with shields by 50 and deals 10% of armor penetration to targets that aren't blocking with the shield. So what this means, if you're unaware, every time that you block, you actually lose stamina. So if someone's using a shield and they're blocking your shots, you're just going to be taking away 50 of their stamina rather than the small amount that it would normally be. If they're not blocking with a shield, you now have 10% armor penetration, which this isn't completely overpowered and broken to the point where you're instantly going to be killing people in heavy gear, but it is going to help a little bit. The last talent is just going to be a little bit of survivability and that scent of blood. Regen 100% of weapon damage done as health when you're dealing damage to someone who is trapped. Now, in my opinion, this is going to be your default build that you're going to be running 24-7. Now, I would say there are some exceptions, especially when you're going into war. Using the musket, you shouldn't really be having a need to utilize these traps because you're going to be in the back line. So you could actually drop these three. Now, if you find yourself hitting a lot of headshots, critical reload is actually really beneficial. Landing three headshots within five seconds of each other grants an instant reload. Now, this doesn't mean five seconds in total time. It's actually referring to five seconds in between each shot. But if you didn't want to pick that up, that's completely fine. It's just optional. Now, greater accuracy. This isn't really something that I say that you should be looking at as a talent to take. If someone's close enough that you feel you need to hip fire, to be honest, you should be switching to your secondary weapon. So for that reason, it's out. If we were to take a look at back it up, your walk and strafe speed is increased by 10% when an enemy is within 8 meters of a player. Again, if someone's within 8 meters of a player, it's either time that you get out of there or you switch to your secondary. Empowering weakness for me doesn't justify the talent point. What this does is hitting a target with an active debuff triggers empower increasing a player's damage to be increased by 5% for 5 seconds. To be honest, when we're going to be discussing the bulk of our damage, it's not going to be coming from our light attacks. 
which is what this 5% buff is actually going to be applied to. Energy Burst is an absolute joke of a talent. It shouldn't even be in the game. This this needs... I don't know what they're thinking. This just needs a buff. Attacking a target with an active debuff restores 5 stamina. Yeah, okay. So what would you look at for options? Well, if you want, Shooter Stance is a great ability. This is actually going to give you a lot of throughput damage. The only one negative side effect that I have about this is it makes you immobile. You're literally going to crouch down and be in one spot for as long as it takes you to shoot either your three bullets or if you decide to play the five shots, you're going to be stuck in that position and I can't tell you how many times I have gotten easy headshots on people that are just going into shooter stance. But if you can position yourself, I will acknowledge that yes, this is a beautiful talent to take. If you didn't want to go that route and you wanted something a little bit more safe, stopping power would be a great option. And if you wanted, you could also dump the other two points inside of there or take that one out if you wanted the last trait and play critical reload. That's kind of personal choice. But for the actual build of this video, we're going to go with the traps. Now your trap. I want to talk about the traps really quick for a second. I could jump off of my roof and break both of my ankles, go to the hospital, get treated, walk out of that hospital on crutches, and I would still walk faster than the RP walk speed that you have when you're deploying a trap. I'm not trying to be a negative Nancy here because this talent is really good, but I can only justify, especially against melee, only being one scenario when you're throwing down traps. I have died so many times just because I'm stuck in that animation that it feels terrible to use. But our secondary weapon that we're actually going to have for this build is the rapier. And this one ability here, repost, this is going to solve all of those problems for the trap. The only instance that I would suggest you using your trap is after you hit this stun from repost. Now, really quickly, I don't want to go into too much detail because I could honestly make a whole nother video on the rapier. So if you want to see that, drop a comment down below and say, you know, yo, let me see that toothpick sword build. All right. And I'll show you some different setups, whether you wanted to drop some of these to actually pick up some more offense. This is a very defensive setup for the rapier, given its role inside of this build. But there are two key talents that I really want to highlight that are going to make the world a difference. One, lasting consequence. This is going to turn your stun into two second stun. This is going to 100% buy you enough time to deploy your trap and make sure you aim it properly for it to hit. The aiming on shooting traps is a little bit weird, but once you get the hang of it, it'll come natural to you. And if you don't know what repost is, you're going to enter a defensive stance for one second. And if you are struck with an ability or a light or heavy attack during this time, the attacker is going to get stunned. Now, this takes a little bit of timing to master. You don't want to just telegraph it and press it as soon as someone is next to you. You kind of want to wait for their animation to start. That way you actually get the hit. If you pop it too early and the enemy knows to look out for this ability because you're using a rapier, you'll kind of throw it away and be at a disadvantage. But if you can get used to the timing on this of when to properly press it, it's going to make miracles happen for you. And the next one that I want to highlight is breathe in. You gain 20 stamina immediately after use, and this is going to be applied to your evade. And your evade is just going to give you a small step in whatever direction you're currently moving, and it's also going to make you invulnerable. If you can time this ability really well against other melee users, you can really dodge some of their big cooldowns and set yourself up for success. And to go over the last ability for the rapier really quickly, Flash is just going to give you a huge lunge forward that you can really use to help kite out and gain distance between you and the enemy. So jumping back to the musket now, let's cover these other two abilities and how you want to be using them. You are always going to want to have your powder burn shot be your first hit. And I can't stress how important it is that you want to hit that headshot to really get the bonus of chronic trauma. Immediately after you hit that powder burn, we're going to be loading your power shot. And I want you to keep in mind all these damage modifiers that we have. And again, if you can, we're trying to get that headshot on the power shot and every shot that comes afterwards. When we're talking being level 60 though in endgame with all the different damage modifiers that we're going to have, because there's actually a lot more outside of this, our attributes and our weapons, that just this combo of hitting a headshot on powder burn, and then if you can hit a headshot directly after with power shot, for someone in light gear, you've basically killed them. That combo of hitting both of these abilities back to back, especially if they're headshots, is extremely powerful. Alright, so let's talk about attributes. So... Luckily, both the musket and the rapier both scale off of the same stats. During the leveling process, you're going to get way more benefit 
to just dump all of your points into dexterity. If you want to drop a couple of points into constitution just to get that first threshold to get a 20% stronger heal from your consumables, you could do that for sure. But when we get to level 60, you're actually going to respec and you're actually going to main in intelligence. And it's going to be for these thresholds, specifically the end one. And we'll go over why in a second. But you're only going to want to do this when you actually have enough points to actually put into intelligence, along with having gear that's going to help you get to that threshold of 300. So starting out for the first threshold that's actually going to help us out is we're going to get 10% damage on all of our critical hits. So basically all of our headshots are going to be doing 10% more damage. The next threshold is going to give us 15% to elemental damage. This is going to apply to the burn status off of the power shot. The mana after the dodge is completely useless. Now I'm not 100% sure that this will actually apply for the powder burn effect because it does say damage over time spells and I don't think that they count powder burn as a spell. However, this next trait is the whole reason that we want to go into intelligence and get those 300 points we will get 30% damage on the first hit on a full health target. The fact that the musket still scales off of intelligence makes this absolutely amazing to have. And all the points that you'll have left over because of actually having gear getting into intelligence, if you want, I would suggest dumping them all into dexterity and not even going for this first threshold into constitution because all of this dexterity added on with this intelligence is just going to be more damage for your musket shots. And luckily, it's the same boat for the rapier. They both scale off of dexterity and intelligence, so that's not being left behind in the dirt either. All right, so let's talk about perks that you want to try to be keeping an eye out for during your leveling process, and definitely when you get to end game that you're going to want on your weapons and on your actual gear. Now, professions in New World are absolutely huge. They're super, super important. I highly suggest you take the time and actually level them unless for some reason you have a boatload of gold and you can just buy these items that you need off of the trade post. So if we were to look at actually crafting an item, you'll see the materials that you need on the side, but this is what we're focused on right here. You're going to always want to add the max Azoth. Obviously, I'm not available to do it right now. It's 75, but I would select that. And you can see each one gives me a perk, gives me a perk and a gem slot, perk, gem slot, and a second perk. And it keeps going and going, right? The main thing that we want to do this for is to actually determine the perk that we want. Now, out of all of these perks, there are three perks that I think are the best ones. And I'll list them from, I guess, worse to, in my opinion, what the best one is. So starting out, the first one is enhanced. Light and heavy attacks deal 5% more damage. Super simple to understand. So taking the number two spot is going to be Vorpal. 5% increase to headshot damage. This 5% is actually going to apply to your power shot and your powder shot. And going for that big burst of opening damage, this is going to just give us a little bit more benefit than Enchanted did. And taking the number one spot that you definitely want to try to get on your weapon is going to be Keenly Jagged. All of your critical strikes will cause a bleed that deals 7% weapon damage per second for 10 seconds. But this has a 10 second cooldown. So you're not actually going to be able to stack it multiple times on one person. But you should be able to keep a high uptime on it if you're actually landing your headshots. This bleed combined with the fire damage from powder shot is going to do really, really good damage. Now you could get lucky and get a weapon that actually has three perks on them. Now, by some miracle, if you happen to get those three perks on a weapon, I'm sorry you wasted your luck on a video game and you didn't go play the lottery. But in all seriousness, when you're going to make your weapon, the main thing that you're actually going to use this slot for is going to be that Keenly Jagged perk right there. You're going to select it. Now, it's not going to be an absolute guarantee that that perk is going to be the perk on the weapon, but it is going to be a very, very high percentage that it actually is. Now, I would suggest it would take a lot of resources and I know it may seem very tedious and you're relying on RNG, but I would try to get a weapon roll with Keenly Jagged on it from determining your perk and at least one of the others. If you could do that, I would say you're more than good, even just Keenly Jagged by itself, you're more than good to do PvP with it. If you get one of the other two, that's just an extra bonus. I'm personally not even going to go through the hassle of trying to get that god roll of having all three perks. So when it comes to armor and crafting the gear and the perks that you want to be looking out for, the two main ones that I would highly suggest you get is going to be crippling powder burn and accelerating traps. So when it comes to gems and what you're actually going to be putting in your gear, 
for your musket you're always going to want to put in the best onyx that you can this is going to give you 30 percent damage against targets with full health and with all these damage modifiers you can kind of see why i said that this build really doesn't come online and and show its full force until you know we're in the end game for your rapier the play style that we're going with it's going to be an easy choice we're going to go with the moonstone this is going to give you plus 24 percent damage whenever a player is below 30 health when it comes to your armor gems though i'm going to suggest you actually go with an emerald just because this is going to give you damage absorption versus thrust damage which you know given that you're a musket build ideally the only thing that should really be killing you is other people using the musket just because you're always going to want to maximize the range between you and the other person but if you find yourself constantly being in melee range you could actually switch this out for something like a moonstone where this is going to give you slash damage absorption which is going to be great against great axes since they're so popular right now but you could also just use an onyx strictly for physical damage all right guys so as you can see i have all the damage modifiers up on the screen and you can quickly see why this build would easily two shot if not come close to one shotting anyone in light gear you just got to make sure that you're getting that first headshot hit while they're at full health with your powder burn and making sure that your follow-up shot from power shot is also a headshot if you can do this, you're basically going to be in the back line, like... Practical nuke! Incoming! But that covers everything here. Let's jump in and break down some gameplay. Okay, so let's get into some gameplay and actually talk about playstyle. You know, what are your goals? How are you going to survive? So again, as I mentioned the talents, your opener is always going to be the same thing. If you have to jump on someone, you're always going to try to proc that called shot, the three seconds of aiming, combined with all of those different damage modifiers that we have. The 5% is just a little bit extra, might as well take it. You're always going to load powder burn first, and you're going to be looking for that headshot. Immediately after, we're going to load in our power shot and try to get that second headshot. If that second headshot lands, it's going to be absolutely an insane amount of damage on people who are in light gear, especially. So say you're going for someone in heavy gear and that's basically not your guaranteed kill to where, you know, you're just putting an extra body shot inside of them from a light attack or anything like that. The fight started, what are you going to do? Well, you want to try to hit a couple of basics. Ideally, they're a distance away. They're either probably going to try to run or they're going to charge you and try to get into combat. Depending how far there are, if you can get a couple of other shots in, take it. If they're getting close, you're going to want to try and start kiting. The first thing you want to do to start kiting is dodge. So I'm sure you've noticed whenever you start dodging, at the end of your dodge, you actually get a small animation of pausing for a second. If you actually weapon swap right before that animation happens, it actually cancels that animation so you can have continuous movement. That is something you really need to get used to if you're going to kite effectively. So what you'll do, as you can see in the gameplay, I'm literally just dodging, watching my stamina, pressing evade to also get back my 20 stamina from that proc of breathe in just so I don't have to wait as long for my stamina to regenerate so I can dodge again so I'm creating more distance between me and the person. Now the one serious downfall of the musket is I'm sure you've noticed your abilities actually have an animation to load into your gun. Now you don't just want to be popping these in when someone is next to you trying to melee you. If you're fighting a person at range, just pop behind some cover, load them in so you're safe and you're not giving them any free hits, pop back out, take your shot, and you know, just play that peek boot game. But when you're kiting melee, you really want to get enough distance so you're actually able to take the time and load in your shots. So depending what you're fighting against and if your stamina is low, you can actually use Flash as a gap creator to create some distance between you and the enemy but it's actually worth noting that this ability is so clutch if you're fighting something like the great axe and you get stuck in gravity well you can actually use this ability and lunge out of the gravity well and then start your dodge roll to help create some distance now what happens if you don't have flesh and you're in gravity well that's the time that you're going to want to hit your repost you could definitely weapon swap as well and hit that trap just so it's a little bit of extra CC for you to actually get out of that gravity well and survive. Or sometimes if they shoot it a little bit short and you're just on the edge, you can actually use your evade to just bump yourself out of it. Now I do want to mention that there's, you know, two roads that you can go down when you're using the rapier in combination with the musket specifically against other melee users. You can use the rapier strictly as just a kiting utility tool and just run endlessly as soon as someone gets into melee range with you. As you can notice in this clip, I actually won this fight 
without having trap on my ability bar. I was kind of super late at night and I was kind of brain dead after a long day, but I wanted to show that you don't need trap to actually win the fight. And you also don't need to use the rapier to land the kill. However, that does require you to hit your shots. And I can tell you, I was missing a lot of shots that day. So that fight took way longer than it should have. But everyone's going to have off days. So just keep practicing with the musket. And I guarantee you, you'll eventually get better and be at a place where you feel like you're consistently hitting your shots. The second road that you can take with that rapier is more of an offensive approach. When that melee pushes in, depending on their health, depending on your comfort with being in melee, you could actually use the rapier just to finish the kill. But that's it. That's the meat and potatoes for the play style of this build. Your musket is super straightforward. Hit your shots. Try to aim for the head. If you're fighting range, take your time, duck behind cover, load your abilities and safety. If you're fighting melee, try to only load them once you've created distance between you and the other person. It definitely takes a little bit of practice and getting used to, especially if you're coming from playing something like bow spear, which is a great combo. I absolutely love it. I would say that the musket is easier to hit shots, but it's harder to survive. But it also feels very rewarding when you actually get kills. So let's jump into some tips that you may not be aware of that I think are super important to know for the musket. For the first one, all your overload shots will actually go on cooldown as soon as you use them. So it's always worth preloading your powder burn ability before getting into combat so you can instantly load up another one if you miss your first shot. Swapping weapons won't remove your overload shot either, so always make sure you have one loaded. Next, your musket will actually automatically reload when you swap weapons. So your reload time on the musket is 2 seconds. If you shoot, then swap weapons, and wait 2 seconds, when you swap back to the musket, it will have reloaded itself. So another tip that I have is to actually open up your settings go to your gameplay and change your camera sensitivity. If your camera sensitivity is pretty high, you're more likely to accidentally flick your shots just at the very end as you're about to shoot. And with a lower sensitivity, you'll find it's a lot slower to aim and you'll be less likely to accidentally flick that shot. It'll take a little bit getting used to and it kind of requires a little bit of desk space. But if you have a big enough mouse pad and the space to do it, I highly recommend it because it can make a huge difference in the consistency of you hitting your shots. All right. So another tip that I have for you guys is don't forget about food. If you scroll down in your cooking stations, you'll actually see a section for dexterity food. And if you have a read, this one increases dexterity by six and strength by four. This one increases dexterity by 10 for 25 minutes. This is just going to help for damage. It may help you meet that little bit of extra points you need to meet a threshold, but this is all going to be dependent on your actual cooking level. So just have a look and use the highest one that is available to you. All right, guys. And the last tip that I have for you is to not forget about your ammo. Okay. This is an extra damage modifier that so many people forget about. Your basic iron cartridge is only going to do a one X multiplier. The higher you go, steel, star metal, I'm pretty sure it's pronounced, or a calcum, I, I don't know. Anyways, th this is what you want to be using for the really, really try-hard moments. I think star metal is actually going to be the most cost-effective and what we'll probably be using. But long-term, if you either have the money or you have the time to farm out the materials to make this cartridge, it is definitely 100% worth taking a look at. Don't forget about it. Guys, I hope you found some of the information in this video helpful. If you did, do me a favor and drop a like on this video for me to let me know. If I've missed anything, do me a solid and post it in the comments below so we can help others out. I'm definitely going to be rocking this build for a while. I want to try to get in some 1vxs. I did a bow spear build that I'll admit wasn't as detailed as this. So I may have to go back over and do another pass through on that. But I actually showcased in another video a 1v2 that I did with the bow spear. So if you want to go check that out, I'll have it linked at the end. And no, I haven't given up on the bow spear. I absolutely love it. I just, I, I played it a ton in beta. And right now I really like the challenge of playing the musket, you know, with a lot of melee kind of in the meta. I want to give a huge thank you to you guys though. Last week and over the weekend, the, the support was crazy with all the views and we actually broke a hundred subs on the channel, which I know is practically nothing in, you know, YouTube land, but it's a milestone in my eyes. So thank you guys. Seriously. I got a ton of content planned, but I don't have an editor. And to be honest, I'm a little bit slow when it comes to editing. And I also value, you know, quality over quantity. I don't want to just 
I don't want to just put out a video just for the sake of putting out a video. And with the little bit of attention that my channel has been getting right now, it really makes me want to step up my game to bring you guys the very best content that I can. I do have other videos up. So if you want to have a laugh and some content to hold you over, I'll, uh, I'll link my stupid meme video that I made at the end. So you guys can go check that out if you want. But again, I hope you guys found this build helpful. I know the musket really isn't in the meta right now outside of large scale PVP, but I'm a huge believer in playing what you like or what you want to play and making it work for you. That's it for me. Once again, guys, thank you so, so much. And just remember the meta. I'll catch you in the next one.